So, Dr. Berti, of course, in order to understand the current situation, it is important to look at Hamas, uh, its evolution, I would say, in the past few years, from its time that it took control over the Gaza Strip until now. It's a much more, uh, it's a weaker con uh, organization than it was a few years ago, isn't it? There's no doubt. I mean, I would particularly emphasize what has happened to Hamas in the past year and a half. Uh, when the Arab Spring began, everybody was very much saying Hamas is on the right side, they're making the right alliances, they're back in the Muslim Brotherhood, they're the rising stars, and everything's going well for them. Well, fast forward a year later, Mohamed Morsi is, is overthrown. There is a new government in Egypt extremely hostile to Hamas, and Hamas finds itself regionally isolated with an Egyptian government uh, determined to hit Hamas, to close the border, to close down the tunnels. So as in the past few months Hamas has been internationally isolated, economically weakened, and politically marginalized. Meaning the people, uh, the citizens of Gaza are not looking at Hamas the way they used to as their leaders and so forth, as their source of uh, social welfare and so forth. Hamas is not that same patron, if you will. Well, Hamas still has to provide because the economy in the West Bank, in the Gaza is in shattered and mm -hmm. the main... Uh, employee is still Fatah, actually, who pays most of the salary, secondly, Hamas, and then UNRWA. So Hamas still provides, but its ability to continue to provide is going down, and with it, also the popularity of the group. In addition, in the past two years, the numbers, the popularity of Hamas in Gaza has been declining due to malgovernment, corruption, uh, issues that are much more related to domestic politics. In the last, uh, in the 18 days that it took uh, for uh, Israeli authorities to finally locate the bodies of the three kids Teens. We heard uh, quite a few times from Hamas leadership, from Khaled Mashal, who of course is uh, not in this region at all, but speaking from abroad, saying that we weren't behind this. And, and usually one would think that if Hamas was behind this, it's something that they would want to take responsibility over. Right. So as a modus operandi, so in general Hamas does claim. Mm -hmm. They are known to claim responsibility for rocket attack, kidnappings. They're not known, for example, Hezbollah never claims responsibility. Right. Hamas does. So this is highly unusual for yeah, the organization. For its own image. For its own image and because this is their procedure. But mm -hmm. there, are a few, there are a few possibilities here. One of them is that they were indeed behind this, but they did not claim responsibility because the operation went horribly wrong and there's no popularity in claiming responsibility for a botched operation. Another possibility that we shouldn't discard is that this operation was uh, perpetrated by a local West Bank cell of Hamas without knowledge of the central leadership. This has happened over and over in the past decade. Over and over it has happened that local members have gone against the orders of the central leadership and, for example, um, stepped in and uh, uh, undermined ceasefires. So there is a certain internal tension within Hamas that would lead us to believe that it's possible that something happens without Marshal or Ania giving the green light. But ha had this uh, turned out differently, had we not found uh, bodies, but we found uh, kidnapped teens, and they would have gone through some kind of Palestinian prisoner deal due to uh, the, the, the negotiating to release these teens, would Hamas then have taken credit? Well, it's hard to tell, but if I use, for example, the Gilad Shalit example right. as a pattern, well, that's what happened. Salafis groups started the operation, then uh, Hamas Qassam Brigade's commander Jabri stepped in and sort of told the other groups, well, we got this from now, we're going to take care of the captive, we're going to conduct the negotiations. In this particular case, however, we find ourselves in a very different context, and with the unity deal in place, uh, it just makes very little sense strategically for Hamas to come forward with such type of operation like a kidnapping. When we look at what the Israeli uh, government will decide to do, it's uh, on a, a large spectrum from a very targeted uh, operation to a wider, more expansive operation, specifically in the Gaza Strip. Uh, would you, I, I know you're uh, not a, a defense a st a specialist, but looking at Hamas today, is there enough targets within the Gaza Strip or is there enough uh, targeted, uh, we saw Jabari, of course, is the last targeted assassination that Israel uh, conducted. Are there enough targets in the Gaza Strip for Israel to uh, demolish Hamas? I don't think that's a, post that's a realistic objective. Okay. I mean, I think Israel is very much aware that an organization like Hamas is very complex, is very entrenched, it's political, it's social, it's military. Israel can certainly... And it's also abroad, it's also outside of Gaza Strip. Absolutely. Um, and it's, I mean, Israel can decide to go in Gaza. The only way to actually 
significantly uh, damage the military infrastructure would be to go in, which I'm not necessarily uh, sure it's a good option anyways. But even so, the larger question here is, and I think Israel has been wary, very wary of this, the situation now in Gaza is very unstable. There's not just Hamas. There is a um, plethora of radical Salafi jihadist group who would actually have been criticizing Hamas for years, saying Hamas has sold out, has moderated. So Israel may very well be needing to be very careful what it does in Gaza because right. Hamas is certainly an address, certainly someone Israel can talk to, but if Hamas goes down, there's very well the possibility of chaos and the rise of even more radical groups. Let's talk about Hamas in the West Bank, of course. Uh, definitely it's, it's playing second fiddle to uh, President Mahmoud Abbas, who is still, despite the last uh, 20 days, still in charge. Do they, does Hamas have any more aspirations to overcome Mahmoud Abbas, or do they understand that for now they should be staying uh, second fiddle? Uh, Hamas in the West Bank has been weakened substantially after 2007. I think between 2007 and now, the Palestinian Authority has pretty much taken care of uh, not eradicating but weakening the most they could the Hamas infrastructure in the West Bank. In addition to that, in the past three weeks, Israel has definitely, uh, let's say, helped them in that pursuit because the, the targets Israel has been hitting in the past three weeks have definitely also further weakened Hamas in the West Bank. So there is no uh, doubt that Hamas center of power is in Gaza. Right. But when you look at the Hamas uh, leadership, uh, Khaled Mashal, who used to be in this region, is now uh, in exile, uh, so to speak. Is he really calling the shots? Or, or, as we said, are there more local cells here in Hamas that are actually operating completely alone? Uh, it's a bit, little bit of both. Khaled Mashal is very influential, but he doesn't call the shots, no? Mm -hmm. Because, especially since you have a Hamas government in Gaza, well, the Gaza political leadership and their power has been rising. So people like Ismail Aniya, Mahmoud Zahar, they're extremely influential, just as much as Mashal. So I wouldn't say it's definitely not a one-man show. And because the leadership is so geographically dispersed, there is much more room for internal conflict. So it does happen recurrently in Hamas history that you have cells going rogue, that you have leaders contradicting mm -hmm. each other. So yes, it's not as cohesive as people like to think it is. And of course, the uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is also trying to sell to the world, uh, whether one agrees with it or not, that Hamas was not only behind the attacks, but it's because of the unity government that Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas needs to disengage from Hamas and show that he's not part of this unity government. When we're hearing, of course, earlier we spoke about how it's simply a technocratic government, and thus it's going to be very hard to sell abroad. Uh, yes, I would, I would agree with that. With that point of view. Also, I would say that as of today, Mahmoud Abbas is in a gray area. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been given irrefutable proof that Ania or Marshall ordered this kidnapping. Pro also because it's a possibility they didn't and it was a rogue uh, cell. So because of that, he needs to make a political decision. And my sense is that as long as it doesn't, is not forced to get rid of the unity government, he will not do so and he will try to continue to keep to keep it going, although it's much shakier than it was before the kidnapping. Dr. Birdie, I want